So we're in Southeast Colorado right now around the Rocky Ford and La Junta area. We're working on a really cool project right now. We're trapping swift fox to translocate them to the Fort Belknap Indian Reservation in Eastern Montana. The Lahana area is a great place to trap swift fox because we have good numbers of swift fox out in our short grass. Every time we do an effort like this where we trap or we are, are setting game cameras and doing surveys, it's, it's really, really neat to see what is actually out there and starting to get a true sense for, for how prevalent swift fox are in Colorado. Swift fox really like the shorter the grass, the better. And uh, in this area, we have vast tracts of short grass prairie where you can't see a house as far as the, as the eye can see. So we go out every evening and we set our traps and then at sunrise the next day, we start checking those traps. We wanna get those fox basically to our, our processing area into, into air conditioning as soon as possible. We don't wanna uh, expose them to stresses and. Um, so we bring them back here to Rocky Ford and we have a veterinarian staff here on site that is uh, taking really good care of the fox and, and uh, they're taking, uh, we, we're taking fecal samples for disease testing and taking, drawing blood and, and doing a whole, whole suite of tests just to make sure that the fox are healthy before they get sent up to Montana. This is an exciting project on, on many levels. I mean, swift fox, while being small and, and as nocturnal animals, they're, they're not regularly seen by most people. They're abundant across the short grass prairie across eastern Colorado. Uh, we have a very well-defined um, monitoring program uh, that's run at least over the last 20 plus years um, to make sure that we're, we're maintaining that level of occupancy of fox across their habitat types. Um, in the neighborhood over the last 20 years, consistently of about 80, 85% of our swift fox habitat is, is occupied by swift fox. So Colorado, a state that has very strong swift fox populations, is happy to contribute fox to Fort Belknap Indian community in northeastern Montana to assist with range-wide expansion of swift fox and reoccupying historic swift fox habitat. All right, you done? Yep, I think so. So after we've processed the foxes, they get stored in kennels for a short period of time. And then they'll end up going north to Montana. When they get to Montana, they're gonna be taken out. If they were captured in, in a pair or family group, or if you have foxes from the same area, they'll take those fox to the same area because they, they're family individuals or they know each other. And they'll take them out to a prairie dog hole and they will release the fox right at the hole they choose large holes so the fox will use it as a den and they have a pen around that prairie dog hole and it's called a soft release so instead of just letting the animal go on the prairie what they're doing is let, letting that fox den up and have a den site where it feels comfortable for a few days and kind of be you know get its bearings before it's released and then after five days of being kind of in that in that pen then they'll they'll take the pen exposure uh, down and and then they'll they'll let the fox free So these Colorado foxes are coming in on our second year of the reintroduction effort. Um, and the whole goal of this is to bolster swift fox populations. So swift fox have not been present in the Fort Belknap area for over 50 years. And so this reintroduction is bringing them back to a place that has great habitat for them. It might help establish some connectivity between the extant swift fox populations. The amount of effort that goes into this massive scale reintroduction project is huge. It's led by the Fort Belknap community and the Smithsonian. The Smithsonian is really leading the charge with the science side of this reintroduction, but it is requiring that tons of diverse stakeholders are brought in and supporting this project. And that includes our state agency partners. We, are, we have representatives from four different state agencies. Uh, Colorado Parks and Wildlife in particular has really stepped up uh, and done so much work in helping us coordinate the trapping efforts. We obviously could not do this without all the important people involved. It's very common for Colorado Parks and Wildlife to uh, share wildlife with other states. So in a project like this, I mean, honestly, it's kind of 
d depressing, it's sad that you have something as cool as a swift fox that is no longer found on a landscape where it belongs. And in a landscape where the habitat is actually there. And, and what was the case with swift foxes is, is that they you know, were, were extirpated in Montana and southern Canada and the Dakotas due to, to mostly to, to poisoning uh, when there was a campaign to eradicate coyotes and wolves in those areas. And, you know, swift fox weren't, weren't the intended target, but unfortunately those areas lost their swift fox. So it's, it's really, really exciting to, to be part of a project trying to recover a species in an area where it doesn't exist currently. Um, and, and, and adding a component back to the ecology of that system and, and something that while a lot of people may not see the swift fox, you know, when, when occasionally a person gets to see a swift fox on the landscape, that's a, that's a, a gem, it's a nugget of a, of a really awesome experience to see an animal like that on the landscape where, where it should be. As a tribal member, and uh, many of the tribes have this feeling, that all the animals are important. And, uh, you know, sometimes we get asked, well, why are you, you know, taking the effort to bring swift fox back? What are, what's their value? And their value to us is, it's like bringing a relative back home. And we just, you know, we believe that, you know, they deserve to be back in their native country just, uh, just as well as we do. As many tribes on the Great Plains, we have a lot of our problems and, uh, you know, social issues, uh, alcoholism, drugs and whatnot. And to be able to do something like this and be part of something like this, especially bringing these college kids out, it brings them in connection, more in connection with, uh, with nature and see, lets them see other opportunities that are out there. So it's not just turning an animal loose on a prairie and hoping it survive. There's always that connection with, you know, uh, the tribal people have with the animals. And so these guys will be talking about this, you know, release, uh, you know, for years to come and, you know, to the, with their grandkids, you know, that if they see one, uh, hey, I was part of that. We'd like to think that here on Fort Belknap, that by bringing us with Fox back and earlier the Blackfooted Ferret and the Buffalo, that kind of gives us one of the most complete ecosystems in the northern prairies. And uh, it, so it's a source of pride, but it's also, like I said, you know, bringing a relative back that's been gone for many, many years. <laughs>